Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next day. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Hear that sound? It's an invitation to a festival that's happening all over New York Central Park today. Everywhere people are singing, dancing, dressing up, and getting together to celebrate the music and culture of Africa. You know, all black Americans have roots in Africa since our ancestors originally came from there. So Africa is very much a part of who we are today. One of my favorite things about Africa is the tradition of storytelling. Here's one of the stories I love best. It's called Mufaro's Beautiful Daughter. Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, an African tale. By John Steptoe. Read by Felicia Rashad. A long time ago in Africa, a man named Mufaro lived with his two daughters, Manyara and Niasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Niasha were very beautiful. Manyara was almost always in a bad temper. She teased her sister and said, Someday, Niasha, I will be a queen and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Niasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you, but why do you say such things? Because everyone praises you, Manyara replied. But when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. Niasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. One day, Niasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nioka. You are welcome here. From that day on, Nioka was always at Niasha's side when she tended her garden. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The most worthy and beautiful daughters of the land are invited to appear before the king, he proclaimed, and the king will choose one to become queen. Mufaro called Manyara and Niasha. It would be a great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. That night, when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. In her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared standing in the path. 
please, said the boy. I'm hungry. Will you give me something to eat? Out of my way, Manyara replied. Tomorrow I will become your queen. How dare you stand in my path? After traveling for what seemed to be a great distance, Manyara came to a clearing. There was an old woman seated on a stone. Manyara, she said, I will give you some advice. Soon you will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you, but you must not laugh in return. How dare you advise your future queen, Manyara scolded. Stand aside, you ugly old woman. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees, and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. <laughs> I laugh at you trees, she shouted and hurried on. In the morning, the wedding party assembled outside, but Manyara was missing. Everyone bustled about searching and calling for her. When they found her footprints on the path to the city, they decided to go on as planned. They were deep in the forest when Niyasha saw the small boy standing by the side of the path. You must be hungry, she said, and she handed him a yam she had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared. Later, the old woman appeared and pointed the way to the city. Niyasha thanked her and gave her a small pouch with sunflower seeds. Then, when the party came to the towering trees, their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Nyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, they were near their destination. Nyasha ran ahead. She stood transfixed at her first sight of the city. But as they entered the city gate, the air was rent by piercing cries, and Manyara ran out wildly. When she saw Niyasha, she fell upon her, sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister. Oh, please, father, don't let her go, she cried. There's a great monster there, a snake with five heads. He would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, my sister, please don't go inside. Frightened Niyasha to see her sister so upset. But leaving her father to comfort Manyara, she bravely made her way to the king's chamber and opened the door. On the seat of the great chief's stool lay the little garden snake. <laughs> Niyasha laughed with relief and joy. My little friend, she exclaimed, it's such a pleasure to see you. But why are you here? I am the king, Nioka replied. And there, before Niyasha's eyes, the garden snake changed shape. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy with whom you shared a yam in the forest, and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best as Nioka. Because I have been all of these, I know you to be the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. And so it was that Niyasha agreed to be married. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration, and a great feast was held. Mufaro proclaimed to all that he was the happiest father in the land, for he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters, Niyasha, the queen, and Manyara, a servant in the queen's household.
sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when the call went out for Niasha's wedding, it was probably played on a drum. Drums are the heartbeat of African life. But it's how a drum is made that gives it its power. So it's really important who the drum maker is. I'm Koblam Incidente, and I'm an African drum maker. When I make a drum, I feel very connected to an ancient tradition, a tradition that goes back many, many centuries. And when I carve a drum, I feel I'm, I've become a part of that tradition. The first thing I do when I carve the drum is to take my tool, the asso, and take off the bark of the wood. When I work with it, I have to be very careful because I can hurt myself easily with this tool. When I choose a log to make a drum, I look for something that will be large enough, something that will be strong enough to make the instrument that I want to make. The wood that I like to use is red cherry or red oak. These are woods that make good drums. Today, I'm making a djembe drum. This drum comes from the old Mali Empire. It is a drum of celebration. After I finish shaping the drum, I begin to hollow out inside of the shell. I'll use a tool called the gauze chisel. It's like a knife, but it has a curved blade on it. And this allows me to scoop out the wood inside the log. When I make a drum, I put a lot of my own energy, spirit, and soul into it. So it's important to me that the person who plays the instrument understands that this drum is something that we both share. I feel when you can take something out of a raw piece of wood and create an uh, instrument out of it, then you're making magic. Depending upon the drum that you want to make, you use different types of animal skins. For this djembe drum, I use a goat skin. And I soak this skin in water till it gets real soft so that I can mold it onto the shell of the drum. The skin stays fastened onto the drum by cradles. You have one cradle on the top and one cradle on the bottom. Now I let the skin dry for a day before playing it. When I complete a drum, I feel very satisfied. I feel this instrument now can make its own sound and make its own music and have a life of its own. drum is only one of many voices in African music. And here to show us some others is Kamate Denizulu, a master musician who collects and plays authentic musical instruments that originated in Africa. 
Kamati, what is the instrument you're playing here? Well, this instrument here is, is called a twanga. A twanga. Right. And it's found throughout Africa, and it's known by many different names. It's said to be one of the great ancestors to the modern-day piano and organ. So what else do you have to show us? Well, I brought a couple of other interesting goodies along, such as the hoo-hoo. The what? The hoo-hoo. The hoo-hoo. Right. It's a very ancient form of a trumpet, which is found in two countries in Africa, Chad and Cameroon. Mm -hmm. It's made out of a calabash or gourd, which is a vegetable, and it's in the same family as the pumpkin. Right. All right. And this part is made out of a piece of bamboo, mm -hmm. OK? And it's a it has a beautiful sound. You can also feel it, not just. Just hear it. Let's hear it. Wow, what a sound, what a feeling. It's a beautiful instrument. It is. It's very ancient also. Now, Kimanti, this looks like an ordinary seashell. How could this possibly be a musical instrument? Well, I'll show you, okay? conch shell. It's called Lambi in Haiti. Haiti is an island in the Caribbean. It's also, of course, played in Africa, and it's known by different names. Mm -hmm. And how do you turn it into a musical instrument? You count down three rings from the tip. Only three, not four, not five. And then you put it to your lips. <laughs> Three rings, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's great! Yes. <laughs> was good. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Now, what else do you have over here? I want, I want to show you something. Do you mind? Can no, show you not at something? all. No, you no, know, no. in Africa, the instruments are not just played solely by one person, but in groups, in large groups. Uh -huh. And this instrument is called a kasa. An akasa. Right. It comes from Ghana. The Ga people play it. The Ga people. And this instrument right here, this is an instrument. It's called the This is what you've been sitting on is an instrument? Yeah, it's called the gome. Oh, and it's played God. with your hands and your feet. OK. And the akasa is played something like this. Can you do that? Yeah. All right. All right, you got it? Right, and you're going to play the gome. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. We Thank really enjoyed much. it. You know, listening to the music of Africa really makes you feel like you're there. Reading about it does too. So, if Africa is a place that you want to visit, then here are some books that are just the ticket. But you don't have to take my word for it. Jambo, that means hello in Swahili, a language spoken in many African nations. Here's a book that will introduce you to the language of Swahili. It's called Jambo Means Hello by Muriel Feelings. This book is written as an alphabet book. It's sort of like a dictionary. There's a word for every letter of the alphabet. Each page tells you what the word means and also a little story about each one. For example, Rafiki means friend. In Africa, friends work and play together. The drawings in the book are done by Tom Feelings. I think they're incredible. 
because the pictures are so lifelike, you can almost tell the meaning without looking at the word. This is no ordinary storybook of fantasy, but it's lots of fun to read. You'll find out about a whole world you probably never even knew existed. Africa is thousands of miles away, but to get a little taste of it, just travel down to your neighborhood library and take out this book. And when you get there, tell them Andrew Yali sent you. Hello, I'm Josette. And if you're interested in learning about life in Africa and you can't get there just yet, then I suggest you read the Jafta series by Hugh Lewin. They're all about a little boy named Jafta. Jafta's a sweet, understanding kind of kid. He loves animals and treats them well. He doesn't have many toys, but he's got lots of pets. Jafta has a very special relationship with his father. Sometimes his father carries him across the river on his shoulders. The pictures are great, and they have a real African feel. So if you want to take that trip to Africa, then just go to the library and pick up the Jafta series. It's fun to read. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I'm here to tell you about a story with strange animals and interesting words. It's an African folktale called Who's in Rabbit's House? The story is about a play put on by an African village. The village people act and dress up like different animals. There's a ferocious leopard, a strange elephant, and a peculiar rhinoceros. Some parts of the story made me laugh, especially when the creepy caterpillar came out of the rabbit's house. The pictures in this book are painted in the colors of nature, which make them very unique. If you'd like to read a story from another country, try Who's in Rabbit's House. It's a little different and a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Well, we're just about ready to begin one of the highlights of today's festival. It's a performance by a group called Forces of Nature, and they're going to dance a lamba, or celebration, that's based in the West African folkloric tradition. Although much of what we'll see is rooted in the past, Forces of Nature mixes the old with the new, creating something entirely unique.
proud of my African heritage, and I'm glad that that heritage is now a part of our American tradition. I'm gonna go dance. See you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters by John Steptoe, published by Lothrop Lee and Shepherd Books. Jambo Means Hello, Swahili Alphabet Book by Muriel Feelings, illustrated by Tom Feelings, published by Dial Books for Young Readers. Jofta Series by Hugh Lewin, illustrated by Lisa Copper, published by Carol Rota Books, Incorporated. Who's in Rabbit's House by Verna Artema, illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon, published by Dial Books for Young Readers. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. In uncertain times, there's no more effective way to make your kids feel good and safe than to spend time with them. We at Reading Rainbow suggest sharing a book with your family. Read for fun, read for family, read for our future. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Oh, my God.